the sticks. We're a channel that's dedicated to going electric in rural America. And if you're interested in how you can make electric work for you, then go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe. So we're just a couple of uh, EV enthusiasts living in Dodge County, Nebraska, also known as The Sticks. And the D.C. fast charging desert of the country. So I went EV because... I, had, I was living with a gas car, a 2010 Ford Focus, and I had driven that car for, ten, for nine years until 2019 when I finally went EV. And in nine years and 90,000 miles, that car started to have all sorts of problems. I had to change the brakes. I had to change the air conditioning system, which was well over $500. The brakes was was a couple yeah, hundred dollars. You did it yourself too, though, so that's why it was that cheap. It yeah, it would have. Yeah, it, that's right. It would have um, been more. So, and, yeah. and and pulleys off your belts had to get changed and and idler pulleys. The the long and short of it is the maintenance costs on that vehicle were beginning to go out of off the charts. So I decided to research a better alternative. And I ended up going EV. So I bought a 2017 Chevrolet Bolt. I bought it used in 2019. And I haven't looked back. Going EV is the best decision I ever made. So uh, what's your story? Why did you go EV? Well, EVs with me, I go, I'm go. i a little bit older. So I go back a few more genera- a few more days. Than you a do. few? <laughs> just, a, just a couple, man. I'm only 29. So I can remember... I'm not going to say how old I was, but back in the day, around 1981, there was, I lived in Fremont, Nebraska, and there was a little black EV running around town. I think the guy made it himself. Don't know who owned it, but uh, it was a little black EV and it ran on a bank of liquid 12 volt batteries, uh, like a car battery, only deep cycle. And they had a bank of them and that's how it ran. I think it was homemade. I couldn't tell you any stats on an old car like that. Um, Don't know who owned it. Uh, after that, the next exposure I had to EVs, uh, would have been in the nineties, uh, Ford Ranger came out with an electric version in the nineties, totally different system than what's out today. And it had less than a hundred miles range. Um, very hard to find right now. And the next EVs that I saw come out were the, uh, EV ones from Chevrolet, they weren't, they were, these were all good steps in the progression of EVs, but they weren't really good solutions and practical for living out in the sticks anyway. They didn't have the range that was necessary. Or fast, fast charging ability. Or fast charging abilities, took all day to charge them, uh, and they didn't go very far. Uh, I suppose just staying inside of a little town, you were going to do fine, but if you had to travel or nothing, it was not an option. You were going to drive 100 miles and stop for the day. That was it. So... These early models, although great steps toward progress in the EV technology, were not solutions. Then in 08, we saw the world turn upside down. They came out with them Tesla cars, man. They they were all for the The Roadster. The Roadster. It was a hot car. It was fast. And only the rich could get them. Yeah. And also on the Roadster, it came out in 08. It did have over 200 miles of range. But it didn't have fast charging ability yet either. It didn't have the supercharger network. And even if it did, it had different a different plug than future Teslas would use. <clears throat> so even then was 200 miles, and that's what you got in a day. Anyway, so it's come a long way, but it was very expensive to go to that roadster. Nobody could do it. No, it was too unaffordable. But times have changed. And uh, the price of gas, I've... I, I remember paying 57 cents a gallon. That's how for, old he is. For leaded gas. <laughs> that was leaded gas, which you don't even, you know, some, a lot of people watching this never heard of leaded gas. But 
Yeah, it was a long time ago. And I saw that price go up over five bucks a gallon. I know that today in California, it was up over uh, seven bucks a gallon. And I, it's not going to come down. It's going to go up. That's just part of life of gasoline. And uh, I needed a more economical way to live. And I bought my first EV in uh, March of this uh, 221. And it was a Chevy Bolt. And I have... I absolutely love the car. It's absolutely awesome for me. Uh, I had certain factors I had to figure in for which car to get. And that was the one I thought was the best decision for me. And everybody's got to do that for their own cars. But um, I, I just got to ask you, having bought that car in March, how long did it take you before you put that car in its paces, before you attempted uh, some crazy stuff in that thing? Well, I can tell you this. I know... I went over the route in May of this year. So that would have been two months after I bought the car. We, me and my wife went for our anniversary to Vegas, but we took a long trip because we went South all the way through the grand Canyon from the East and then to Vegas. And uh, then we drove, you know, all the way back and we made several stops at some pertinent areas. Like uh, we wanted to see some things, in Colorado and whatnot. And, so it was about 3,000 miles, a little bit less, maybe. So you owned uh, an electric car for two months, and you went 3,000 miles. 3,000, not only 3,000 oh, miles, yeah. over the Rockies, twice. <laughs> so wow. over and back, it was an awesome trip. I had a, had a great time, got to meet a lot of people, and it was, just, it was just fantastic. Just for context, it hasn't been that long that you could cross the Rockies in a Chevrolet Bolt with no Tesla superchargers to help you. Uh, so the infrastructure has come a long way, but it really hasn't come quite far enough. I've taken a few trips in my own EV. Uh, I, I've, I've traveled more east than west, so I've traveled to, um, to Fayetteville, Tennessee, and Huntsville, Alabama to see family in my uh, Chevrolet Bolt. And also, just about every other week, I have to travel about 300 miles to the Iowa City area to uh, make sure I catch my favorite team, play some uh, football games. So, <laughs> go Hawks. Uh, I'm Cornhusker over here. So, anyway, I, uh, I, I found that road tripping in an EV, it might take a little longer. But it's so much fun. You you stop at a charger. You find things to do. You go eat or whatever. You and everybody and wants hour. to come up and talk to you. Oh yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's it's absolutely wild. People come up, ask you about your car, and I'm like, look, it might take a little longer to get to Huntsville, Alabama, from Fremont, Nebraska, which round trip is about fifteen hundred miles. It might take a little longer to travel those fifteen. Then you're going over the Smoky Mountains when you do that. Too. Oh yeah, and it might take a little longer. But honest to God, it's a lot cheaper, and it's a it's truly a lifestyle anybody can make work. And I think that's one of the main points of this channel. What what are you looking to get out of this channel? Well, me, uh, you know, the things I want to, I think we should touch up, touch on is stuff like how it affects us in rural Nebraska. I said earlier, this is the desert of DC fast chargers out here. You pretty much got to drive at least thirty miles anywhere in Nebraska to get to a DC fast charger. And that kind of information is pertinent to know if you want to go EV. Um, and if you do, like and subscribe. You know how that goes. Um, and there's lifestyle use of the EV we would I'd like to cover because I pull campers. Me and my wife have been camping since we got married. We spent two weeks camping for our honeymoon. So we camp regular and we pull this stuff with a truck. And... I would like to see us cover some information on the lifestyles that we live here in the Midwest and what this can actually do and accomplish. I would also um, like to just see EV education for the Midwesterners because there are people out here that are thinking, I probably ought to go EV, but I don't really know what I'm looking at or what I'm doing. Well, we want to help you find out. It, it seems as, as, as you and I have been watching EV YouTubers for quite some time, they do a great job. Oh, but yeah. Them, there are some really fantastic oh, yeah. YouTube channels. But most there. of them are in places where there's a where there's a lot more infrastructure built out. Or in Colorado, Colorado, they have charging all the way across. It's one of the best charged states in the country. Or California or the East Coast. The whole or the East Coast. Coast. And, and people have forgotten about what they call flyover country, what we on this channel are calling the sticks. Uh, 
couple things I'd like to get out of this channel is I want us to do some test drives. Nothing oh, is yeah. more fun than getting oh. behind the wheel of an EV. Any an brand EV new car is fun, brand. but if it's an EV, then you know you're going to be faster. You know you're going to be better. More <laughs> torque. <laughs> more power. More fun. So I, I, I think that's something we want to do that would uh, be a lot of fun. We're going to do take test drives. We're going to drive the all-wheel drive variant of the ID4. We're going to drive the Mustang Mach-E. We're going to drive the Model X. We have so much planned uh, where you'll get to see what these vehicles can do because they outperform gas in nearly every metric. And even on the charging times, there's pretty soon going to outperform gas. I also want to get into data, hard data. I want to know what the DC fast charge curve on a Bolt EV is in 70 degree weather. And I want to know what it is in 30 degree weather. And I want to know what that curve is on the ID4 in 70 degree weather. And I want to know what it is in 30 degrees. We get snow here. How do these cars handle in the snow? These are all things we're going to be able to talk about in depth. And I want to give our viewers hard data. So if you like hard data, like and subscribe to our channel. Then I want to take you on some of the road trips that uh, that him and I both take. We're going to take you through the Smoky Mountains in our car. We're going to take you through the Ozarks of Missouri in these cars. We might take you over the Rocky Mountains in these cars. An EV is capable of all of that and even more. Even when you go with the most economic, the the least expensive one you can get. It still can do all these things. And finally, I promise our viewers, we're going to cover every reveal of every new EV that comes out. We know that there is a different situation for everybody. There's a different use case for everybody. So we're going to cover all of them. If you want a luxury car, if you've got Porsche Taycan money, we're going to cover it. Yeah, and we don't believe there is a best EV or a worst EV. Everybody's going to have to get just like you do today, if you go buy a truck, you got to get the truck that you need, or you're going to get. You're not. Everybody doesn't need everything. You're going to get what you need for you. If you want to know about how you can go electric in rural America, if you want to know about the EV lifestyle out in the sticks, how you can take your cars hunting, camping, fishing through the Ozarks and the Rocky Mountains, then hit like and subscribe. And this has, has been, been EV in, in the, the Sticks. sticks.